Trophy hunting is big business in Africa. One estimate puts the economic impact at $200 million a year. Minnesota dentist Walter Palmer reportedly paid $50,000 to kill a lion in Zimbabwe. He and a fellow hunter, Dr. Jan Seski, are now in seclusion. They are targets of angry protests over the killing of Cecil the lion and other trophy animals. Nick Pinizzato, the president and CEO I'll of... I'll pick it up there. The president and CEO of Sportsman Alliance is with us. Yeah. His group lobbies to defend hunters' rights. It does not conduct trophy hunts. It gets no funding from African big game hunters or on safaris. Nick Pinizzato, we're pleased to have you here. Yep. Thank you. We are. This interview will include photos of hunters and their trophies. We do not imply that any of them took part in an illegal hunt. So what's the appeal to you? And... And what is it, your response to the outcry mm -hmm. against what happened? Yeah, I mean, the appeal is, is very simple. I mean, it's a, it's a deeply personal thing. You know, for a lot of us, it starts out as a, you know, as a child, you're a parent or, you know, a friend takes you out to experience the outdoors. For people that have never experienced that, I can understand why there's just confusion. They don't understand just the beauty of it. You're just talking about hunting in hunting general. Hunting in general. Henry. Yeah, you know, so, and it's about getting our own food which has always been a tradition in my family and many others, you know, knowing where that food comes from. That's an exciting thing to see a movement here now in the United States where people are more interested in that type of thing. So that's good for hunting. Um, you know, the, the, to have this come into the news the way it has, it's, you know, we don't enjoy talking about this type of thing because we don't know what happened here, by the way. We're going to find out. There'll be an investigation. But on the other hand, it's an opportunity because we don't often get these forums to talk about all the great things about hunting. So I look at this as a great opportunity to do that. Well, we, we want to give you the no opportunity. Go ahead. No, go ahead. We want to give you the opportunity because so many people, you see the hunter standing there grinning very proudly with, mm -hmm. with their game. And it has nothing to do with food, the hunting that we're talking about. So how do you justify the killing at the same time saying it's a way of conservation as well? Mm -hmm. That's what's confusing, Nick. Walk us through that. Sure, absolutely. I, I think in general, the term trophy hunting has been very, very loosely used and thrown around. So for example, I love to hunt deer. And when I get my tag to hunt deer, which, by the way, is given to me by the, the State Wildlife Management Agency, I get to decide then, you know, what type of animal I want to shoot. So for me, it's really about value. It's not about trophy. But I'm doing that in a very managed way. I'm going to take that animal home and I'm going to eat it. And the majority, you know, overwhelming majority, that's what happens. In terms of the value, though, hunting is almost a $90 billion overall industry impact on the economy in the United States alone. We tax ourselves 10 to 11 percent through the Pittman-Robertson Act. $200 million, almost $200 million every year goes right back I, into conservation. You're talking about I'm not aware that hunting is under fire in the United States, generally mm -hmm. speaking. Yep. There are certainly some people that oppose it. I think what we're talking about is what happened in Africa and the outrage over mm -hmm. Cecil the lion. I mean, luring a animal the way it was allegedly lured mm -hmm. and then letting it essentially die slowly for 40 minutes. Is that considered a fair hunt? Yeah, I th and I think that the key thing you said there, we got to find out first what happened. And we're all looking forward to that investigation. If I mean, that I think, is indeed. I think they said they, they dragged a dead um, elephant carcass in mm -hmm. order to lure the lion in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, if, if something illegal was done, you know, no reasonable organization like mine would ever condone something like that. Let's let the facts come out and we'll see. We hope that's not what happened, but if it did, we would never condone that. What we do condone... Well, would you, no, no. Would, would, would you condemn it, though? If those absolutely. are the facts, would you condemn it? Yeah, absolutely. And Ethical should, hunters... Should a lion, who was such a pride of everybody mm -hmm. there, be subjected to this? Mm -hmm. What happened... Okay, in this case, we have almost a celebrity animal, right? We've given this wild animal a name, right. and he's been killed. So I absolutely can understand the outrage, particularly from people who have never... They don't think about hunting a whole lot. We're not in the news. As an industry, we haven't done the best job of telling people about the importance of, of hunting. And, and Africa mm -hmm. is a great example, because if you stop hunting those animals in a managed way, by the way, not just killing, then all of a sudden you don't have money to go in to stop poaching, which, by the way, is the real problem. People going out and just killing sure. these animals and selling them on the black market. Mm -hmm. The money that Americans, Europeans spend in Africa to do this goes into these anti-poaching programs. The last thing we ever want to do as hunters is see these animals go away or be extinct or unhealthy. But it's what? happening. Yeah. And, and, and it's happening in the countries where you're not allowed to hunt them. Why not let them just die naturally? Why not mm -hmm. just go to a safari, take the pictures, and let the animals die naturally? Why yeah. is that not a good idea? So people really romanticize this idea of Mother Nature being this gentle thing. None of us are comfortable with death. Whether we kill a mouse in a mouse trap, whatever, we're not comfortable with that. 
But Mother Nature is a very, very vicious thing. You know, an animal, unfortunately, doesn't just get to go away and die of old age. If we don't hunt them and if we don't manage them in this environment that we live in now, where there are a lot of human beings here, we're talking about disease, we're talking about loss of habitat. I watched a video the other day of wolves taking down a mule deer. This took, we were talking about 40 minutes, allegedly, that it took the lion to die. This, this mule deer suffered and was eaten alive for over four hours. And as a hunter, as a human being, that makes me very emotional. Mm -hmm. I don't want to watch that. It's part of the circle of life. Mm -hmm. But Mother Nature is not a, a gentle thing out there. And, I, and people, I think, just generally aren't aware of that. Nick Pinizzato, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you so Good much. Good to hear from you.